Shh. We've discussed the different kinds of information that are painted on the barrels of our objective. We've discussed tube length, magnification, numerical aperture, which we'll talk a little bit more about, and uh, cover slip thickness, and also immersion types. Remember, you can do oil immersion, you can do water immersion, or you can do glycerol immersion. And so those three types of immersions are available on the objectives that we work with. Now let's spend some time discussing the different grades of objectives that are available for use. Um, when we correct lenses for magnification, we suffer for some things called aberrations. There are aberrations that are inherent in the glass. Uh, for example, flatness of field. When you're looking through a compound microscope and you have a field that is composed of multiple layers of tissue, you might suffer from this pin cushion effect, which is almost like you're looking at the surface of the earth as it's rolling in front of you. To correct for that, uh, we call that flatness of field. And so different objectives are used to make that field nice and flat and even from edge to edge. So here on the screen, you see several different types of objectives. The first one is called an Acromat. This is the least expensive objective manufactured. It does have several lenses in it, but not as many as the higher corrected lenses do. So an Acromat is a fairly low resolution objective that is not corrected for flatness of field, and it's also not corrected for what we call chromatic aberration, which we'll discuss in a second. So an Acromat would give you an image that maybe looked like a pin cushion. So we would want to choose a plan Acromat that gives us a nice flat field of view. They don't show a plan Acromat here, but understand that we're correcting for flatness of field so that the entire field is in focus from edge to edge. So Acromat is the least expensive objective. Then you go to plan Acromat. Now there are two other very important objectives that are used in microscopy. Uh, which are also used on the Leica confocal microscope, so you need to understand these. One is called a fluorite objective. A fluorite objective is a lens which has many elements in it. You can see all these lenses inside the barrel of the objective. And this is highly corrected for the transmission of light. Remember, fluorescence microscopy is a low light level process. We're using reflected light, we're reflecting light off our specimen, and we're expecting the emission light from the specimen to come through the objective. If we use standard acromats or plan acromats, these objectives tend to absorb a lot of light. So manufacturers have discovered a type of glass called fluorite glass, which is highly transmissive in these low light levels that we're using for fluorescence microscopy. So you will see most of the objectives on the confocal microscope are fluorite objectives designed for high transmission of light. A third aberration that takes place when you're making uh, objectives for magnification is called chromatic aberration. This is an aberration that's a function of the wavelength of the light that you're magnifying. If you're magnifying uh, blue light and you're magnifying green light and you're magnifying red light, those, uh, li those wavelengths of light will come to a different focal plane in the objective because of their wavelength. Shorter wavelengths will travel farther. Longer wavelengths will not travel as far in the glass. So you have an image that's distorted because of the magnification of the individual wavelength. So manufacturers have developed objectives called plan apochromats. It's a plan objective, which means it's flat from edge to edge, and it, it is an apochromat, and so it's corrected for chromatic aberration. So all your colors are magnified to the exact same plane, so you get sharp, crisp, flat images, which are beautiful for fluorescence, mi for fluorescence microscopy. And so here you see an apochromat objective, but we're using plant apochromats, which are corrected not only for chromatic aberration, but for flatness of field as well. There are other things that are important about interchangeability of objectives from microscope to microscope. Here you see two different size objectives on this figure. 
One is an old style uh, fixed tube length or 160 millimeter tube length objective, which has a smaller thread. This has a 20.32 millimeter thread. This is called the Royal Society thread. And for about 150 years, most microscopes employed this kind of objective. Well, the manufacturers have changed and they've gone to bigger objectives with a larger thread. So you cannot interchange a lot of the objectives from the older microscopes onto the newer ones. And notice also the barrel length is much larger. Another thing that's important is that these are now infinity corrected objectives, whereas before they were 160 millimeter tube length. Another important feature for you to see is the immersion. We talked about immersion objective. Here is an immersion objective where we have a drop of immersion oil in between the objective and the cover slip that's on your slide which contains your specimen. So in this case, you might be using immersion oil, you might use water, a water immersion objective, or you might use a glycerol immersion objective. All three of these are available on the Leica confocal microscope. Another important feature that we discussed uh, previously was numerical aperture. Remember that numerical aperture is a function of the light gathering capability of the lens. It's the strength of the objective at bringing light into the optical path to resolve your image. You'll notice here that we have three different objectives displayed on the screen. These are all the same magnification objective, but they all have improving numerical aperture. Notice that as the numerical aperture of the objective improves, the working distance is decreased. So when you're working with a very high NA, high numerical aperture objective, your working distance is going to be markedly reduced. It's very important that you remember this so that you know where to focus your objective to look at your specimen. And you can see it's a very complex formula that is used to compute numerical aperture. It's based on the wavelength of light, and uh, we won't go into a technical discussion of that. But notice that this cone of light narrows as the numerical aperture increases on our objectives. So we want to use a very high NA objective to get the best possible images that we can.